Hi everyone, this is Mr. West. We're doing another Khan Academy tutorial today, this time on linear equation, word problems, tables. So we're gonna be given uh, some data in a table and we're supposed to figure out the scenario based on the prompts it gives us. In this first example, we have Amira se sells balloon animals. She uses the same number of balloons for each animal she makes. The table compares the number of balloon animals sold and the remaining number of balloons on a certain day. Okay, so then we have this chart here. You can see animals are on the left. Please note as the number of animals, whoops, wrong pen. As the number of animals goes up, okay, so from 20 to 29 to 38, notice how she's using balloons, so that number is going down. So we're asked, how many balloon animals at most can she sell? All right, so essentially we're gonna have to go until we get to zero balloon animals. Now, some information that's gonna help us, and this is anytime you see a table, we wanna figure out how many balloons do you use per animal? What is the rate? The rate is kind of like the most important thing we wanna find in these tables. Now, normally we have like an X and a Y, and we wanna find out how the x and y changes per unit so for each unit this goes up we want to see how much does the y go up or down in this case y is going down as the x is going up the animals are going up the balloons are going down okay so we want to find the rate but how do you find the rate well we start off with let's see how the animals the x changes each time we notice that from 20 to 29 it goes up 9 29 to 38, it goes up nine. We always wanna find this consistent pattern, okay? Now, for each time it goes up, how are the balloons affected? So this goes down 36, this goes down 36, okay? So it's the same, it's a linear pattern. It's a linear model because it goes up and down. The rate is the same each time, and that's linear, okay? So we know it's linear. We know the rate stays the same, that's good, but what is the rate? So for every nine animals, okay, sorry, yeah, nine animals, we use 36 balloons. So how much per animal? So per animal, per one animal, we would divide that by nine, okay? And we divide this by nine, you have to divide the top and bottom by the same thing, okay, to reduce. Right now I'm just reducing, simplifying that, that ratio, nine, animals for every 36 balloons a for animals b for i should have just wrote it out whatever so now we have divided by nine so 36 divided by nine is four that means for every one animal there i'm writing it out this time happy we have four balloons okay that gives us an idea of how quickly these balloons are going to disappear for the number of animals we we make so how many balloon animals at most can she sell? Well, let's first start with our constraining factor, the number of balloons. Right now we're at 38 animals and we've already used, uh, we have 108 balloons left. So if we know it takes four balloons per animal, we're just gonna divide this number by four balloons to find out how many animals we can make with 108 balloons. So I'm gonna go 108 divided by four and that gives me 27. Don't type in 27. That's 27 more animals. So technically we're going to add this to 27, 38 plus 27, and this will tell us 65. Whoops, I can't really read that. Let me write plus 27 here like this, plus 27. So we get to 65 animals with zero balloons. Okay, so that's a way we can model this. Let's go ahead and write this in. We have 65 total balloon animals in a day with the amount remaining. So let's check it. All right, great work. Next question. Here we go. The ground floor of a tower has a very high ceiling and the residential floors above it each have a constant smaller height. Okay, so just to kind of give you an idea, imagine we have like, you know, the hotel or this tower lobby and then you got all these smaller floors so this first floor you know with the big entrance is a little bit taller okay i like drawing a picture just to get an idea of what's going on the table compares the floor number and the height of its ceiling above the ground in meters okay the ground floor is zero 
and floors one and up. Okay, so the first floor on the elevator button is gonna be zero, and then this would be the first floor, that would be the second, third, et cetera. So this first floor is zero. Okay, so on floor eight, the height above the ground. It's not the height of each ceiling on the floor, it's height above the ground, otherwise that'd be a super tall um, ceiling. 31 meters is super tall. Okay, so we wanna see the rate. Again, we wanna know how this floor changes how this rate changes from each one of these, okay? And then how this changes over here. This time I'm swapping colors. Okay, so I have eight to 15, that's plus seven, and then this is plus seven again, okay? So for every seven floors, how is it changing in terms of the height, okay? In terms of the height, it's going up. Let's see, I need to do some subtraction here, 54 minus 31.6, okay? A, a way to find it is doing the, finding the difference. So 54 minus 31.6, and that will tell you my change, which is 22.4 meters, okay? So every seven floors is changing 22.4 meters. Does that stay consistent? I should be able to add 22.4 to 54 to get 70, uh, to get 76.4, and I do, okay? So this is my ratio, I'm just gonna simplify it now, and I'm gonna simplify it by dividing by seven to the top and bottom. When I divide by seven, I get one floor per how many meters? So I do 22.4 divided by seven, and I get 3.2, so 3.2. Each floor is 3.2 meters tall. Um, and and that's that's how I I find it. That's it. So each floor is 3.2 meters tall. That was my answer. So we're gonna go to 3.2. We're gonna type that in there, and voila, we should get it. All right, next question. Uh, the table compares the pizza temperature and the time uh, Siraj started heating it. Okay, so we have time on the left. That's gonna be our independent variable because time does not care about anything else. And then the temperature is dependent upon how much time we put in there, okay? So independent variable, four, six, eight, it's going up two. How much is our dependent variable going up? It's going plus 15, plus 15, okay? All of these are linear, okay? That's what it says right there, linear. So it's 15, so every two, it's going up. Every two minutes, I should write, it's going up 15 degrees. Or for every one minute, I divide by two for top and bottom, 7.5 degrees. How long did it take the pizza to reach 100 degrees Celsius? Okay, so all I need to do here is I need to divide the goal, 100 degrees, by the rate. Okay, so one minute for every 7.5, I need to divide uh, 100 by 7.5, and it should tell me how much time divided by 7.5 and it's gonna be 13 and one third minute. I think it just wants us to, uh, well actually we had, that's not just, okay, don't make that mistake because we had like a starting amount. So if you go backwards here, if we get to 10 and then zero minutes, we'd obviously start at zero degrees. Okay, so um, it's not just, uh, 100 divided by 7.5 because we have a starting amount, okay? So probably the easiest way here, the fastest way would just continue the table just a little bit longer. So plus 15 would take us to 70 degrees. Plus 15 again would take us to 85. And then plus 15 again would take us to 100. So that's another two minutes, another two minutes, and another two minutes. So that's six minutes total, so that'd be 14 total minutes to get to 100. The rate actually didn't help us all that much this time because we had a starting amount that was not, um, you know, it, not part of our just linear expression. We would need to find the y-intercept. That's a different case. In this case, it's probably just quicker, in my opinion, to do um, filling out the table. So we're gonna put 14 minutes there, and we're gonna check it. And we got it. All right, the table compares the engine's rotation speed and its temperature. So kind of similar thing. Rotation is gonna be the independent variable. Temperature is dependent. But um, for all these problems, by the way, you can always use the table, but sometimes table just takes a little bit longer. That's why I like figuring out the pattern. 
What is the increase in temperature that comes with an increase of one cycle per second in the rot rotation? Okay, so I think it's asking us for the rate here in a uh, kind of long about way. So we have, what is the increase in temperature that comes with an increase of one cycle per second? Let's first find the rate of each, the increases. So this is going up plus two, plus two, okay? At the same time, let's go purple. This is going up, and we need to do subtraction here, 25.4 minus 23.8, and that tells us that this is going up plus 1.6, and that pattern stays consistent because, again, these are all linear. So plus 1.6, plus 1.6. So what is the temperature increase that comes with the increase of one cycle? So we're actually, it's asking us for per, per uh, second in the rotation, it's asking us for to put rotations on the bottom. So we're gonna put rotations on the bottom. Okay, and on the top, we're gonna to put the temperature. And that's generally what you do. You put the, the Y, the change in Y, over the change in X, X generally being the independent variable. Okay, so that's really the way we should do it. it you can kind of express it in different ways, but this is really the way you should do it. So temperature, we know that's 1.6 per two cycles per second increase. So really we just need to do 1.6 divided by two here. So it'll tell us that it has a 0.8 degree temperature increase per one uh, cycle per second increase in rotation. So 0.8 is really the answer we're looking for here. It goes up 0.8 for every one increase in rotation. So let's go ahead and write that in. And that's Celsius, 0 0.8 increase, and there we go. Okay, so we're going to see this, hopefully, if you've been following along correctly. Hope you enjoyed this video. Make sure to stay tuned for more. Leave a comment if you need some help, and be sure to check us out next time right here on West Explains Best.